Well, it was a, a Sunday afternoon, not exactly a conventional way to launch your manifesto. You feel a little bit as though if they could have done, they would have chosen a bank holiday. Compare that with the, the fanfare, the drum rolls of Labour. The Tories just didn't want their manifesto to take over uh, the campaign or divert it. And that, in large part, is because they are haunted by memories of what happened in the last general election. Theresa May unveiled her uh, manifesto and the party started rolling backwards down the hill in that manifesto. She'd uh, promised what became uh, known uh, by critics of it as a dementia tax, uh, that her approach to care policy. Here, very tellingly, uh, Boris Johnson hasn't really come up with a policy for that. He said that he will put a very expensive £1 billion a year sticking plaster on the problem and try to come up with something. But he hasn't dared, for the reasons I say, to go, go near actually coming up with a solution in this manifesto. It's not that kind of manifesto. On the money, it's really striking. Labour was water cannoning uh, money out at the uh, nation in its manifesto, and things here are much more cautious. Labour, even after their manifesto, as you said, have been uh, trying to uh, help out those people, waspies as they're known, women whose uh, pension age suddenly advanced without much notice so they couldn't make preparation for it. They've said we'll actually compensate you fully for everything you lost. None of that sort of money splashing around here. And I think a large part of that is uh, because uh, Boris Johnson feels maybe voters out there don't believe these promises when they happen. But in money terms, one economist said, if this entire manifesto, which remember is a plan for a five-year parliament, if it had been a budget, it would have been described as modest. It doesn't look like a drastic plan for a five-year parliament, and that's because Boris Johnson thinks there's one word at the heart of this entire election, and it's Brexit. The Prime Minister promised spending increases that haven't been seen for a decade, but they're minute compared with Labour's. The Tories want a three billion increase in day-to-day -day spending, Labour wants 95 billion. There were some headline offers, like a boost in the number of nurses, but Boris Johnson kept bringing everything back to Brexit. Here it is. I believe as at least the partial blueprint for that future. Here is the, here is the route map to take us forward, because unlike any other party standing at this election, we're going to get Brexit done. With a, with a deal that is pre-cooked, ready to go. He said his government would borrow to invest, though not on anything like the same scale as Labour. That, he said, was the responsible way to spend. We will invest millions more every week in science, in schools, in apprenticeships and in infrastructure and control our debt at the same time. And we can do all these things. We can do all these things. Here's the kicker. Here's the ready book. We can do all these things without raising our income tax, VAT, or national insurance contributions. That's our guarantee. Putting a so called triple lock on tax, which means no increases are in the rates of income tax, national insurance, or VAT, tripped the last Chancellor up back in uh, just before the last election because he wasn't able to do as he wanted, which was to put a small increase on national insurance for the self employed. It's a real problem if you think you're not going to raise taxes over the next five or ten years because we know we're going to need more public spending, partly if we want to, to get rid of some of the effects of austerity, but just because the population is ageing, costs of health care are rising. A cut to national insurance bills is the only guaranteed tax cut in the manifesto. It puts barely £80 back into an annual pay packet. Only last summer, Boris Johnson promised £20 billion of tax cuts and he was running for the leadership. Supporters here seemed to forgive that and lapped up the new attack lines Boris Johnson had been polishing up. You want to wake up on Friday the 13th of December and find a nightmare on Downing Street? A, a, Corbyn, a Corbyn Sturgeon coalition of chaos? I say, let's go carbon neutral by 2050 and Corbyn neutral by Christmas. Let's go. He was speaking in Telford, which the Tories hold with a slim majority, and which voted strongly for leave. I voted Remain in the referendum, but the, so I lost the vote effectively, my vote. So that's what now needs to happen. So it should be in his hands. He, he 
he's the one who came up with this idea. Whatever he comes up with will be, you know, should hopefully appease everyone, at least give us some kind of closure. Signs here that bigger spending pledges wouldn't have been believed even if Boris Johnson had made them. And Boris Johnson says he's going to spend more money on the NHS. Do you believe him? No. No, I don't think he will, but I don't think any party can really plough thousands into it, else it would have already been done. And do you trust uh, Boris Johnson? More than anybody else. Not totally, but more than anybody else. I'd, I'd be voting Labour just to see a change, see if anything happens. If it doesn't, there's next election and then people will see that for the true colours. Boris Johnson has opted for a much more cautious plan than some might have expected. He risks being outbid by Labour, but he's calculating the voters don't believe big money offers and that in this election, his Brexit pledge trumps everything. Well, just after the launch of the manifesto, we were allowed a few uh, quick words with a couple of cabinet, cabinet ministers. Nicky Morgan, who's actually standing down uh, from Parliament, but is a culture secretary for a little bit longer, a few weeks, and Sajid Javid, the Chancellor. How do you really get to rebuild the public sector if you're also keeping on a little half-promise of tax cuts going on the side? Oh, actually, one of the things we've set out today, alongside this excellent manifesto, is a very detailed costings document, the most detailed, I think, published in any election by any party, that shows exactly how we're paying for all our pledges, including, for example, the tax cut that we want in national insurance for 31 million hard-working people. And we're, we will set out exactly this there. It's published online right now. You can go and see it yourself. Some people think a triple tax lock is a bit of a sleight of hand because you get everybody looking at the main event tax moves. And in fact, as we know, you can have a triple tax lock and the tax burden creeps up year by year. You find other little things offset to move around, like, uh, like pension relief. Well, I think the you know, triple tax lock, first of all, is a very important commitment because what it does is gives hardworking people a sense of financial security, that they know that under the Conservatives, we won't be raising the rates on three of the biggest taxes in the country, national insurance, income tax and VAT. You guarantee but the tax burden won't go up? Well, we don't. No, By no, sleight of hand the, elsewhere the, with well, other no, things. What, what we've set out in our costing today is exactly how we pay for things. It's true to say, isn't it, that you won't be getting back to 2010 levels of public spending, even if you fulfil your manifesto promises. It's not bonanza time, is it? Well, I think what we've shown is that we will always uh, keep control uh, of the nation's finances in a, and keep them prudent to make sure the country we're living in our means. Because we've seen what happens when, as a country, in every Labour government we've seen this, when you lose, lose control of the public's finances, as Corbyn plans with his plans for £1.2 trillion of extra spending, the whole nation pays with an economic crisis. If Corbyn is in Downing Street on, on Friday the 13th, that nightmare will be a crisis by Christmas. Isn't there an issue of um, trust at the heart of that slogan up there? Because it doesn't get Brexit done when you leave. 80% of the work still to be done, isn't it? The important thing is to leave the EU, as we have said repeatedly, is going to happen. We know that hasn't happened so far. The Prime Minister set a very clear date, the 31st January. We have to get a working majority for a Conservative government to make sure that happens. But, but my point was... It doesn't get Brexit done leaving. You move into a standstill transition, 80% of the work's still to be done, isn't it? You're absolutely right. Of course, there's trade agreements and everything else that have to be negotiated. The future and they relationship are, but with they the are EU. a huge chunk of the work. They are. So Brexit of... isn't done. There's a trust issue at the heart of the slogan. No, I don't, I don't agree with that at all. Because actually, for most people, getting Brexit done means leaving the EU, as we promised, as was voted on three and a half years ago. And that's maybe because they've been deceived by people suggesting that that's, that's why they think it's getting Brexit done, because they've been told it's getting Brexit no, no, done leaving. Look, people are very clear on the doorsteps when they when we talk about brexit what they want and what they mean by that is the uk leaving the eu which has not happened uh, despite the promises of three and a half years ago and the last couple of years parliament has blocked that and so actually a majority conservative government will mean that we leave the eu on the 31st of january then we build the future relationship thank you Sarah Gibbon there, well, for Labour's response, joining me now from Westminster is the Shadow Community Secretary, Andrew Gwynne. Mr Gwynne, thanks very much for joining us. There's a very Good clear evening. choice now, isn't there, between the two main parties? A really stark divide in terms of spending, yet despite Labour promising to increase spending by tens of billions, you're still lagging in the polls. What's going wrong? 
Well, look, I agree with you that there is a very stark choice at this election. And I think that the message that we've got to get out over the next 18 days to polling day is that politics can be a positive agent for change. After 10 years of cuts, after 10 years of devastation to so many parts of our country and people living uh, in uh, all four nations of our country, um, Politics doesn't have to be like this. Our country doesn't have to be like this. And the lack of ambition in the Tory manifesto compared with that real change that's being offered in the Labour manifesto, I think, gives us that stark dividing line in the final two weeks Absolutely. of this election. Absolutely. And nobody is doubting that Labour are offering radical reform, a radic radical change. But the polls suggest people either don't want it or they don't believe you can pay for it. Well, I think that after 10 years of Tory cuts, what we're seeing is a disconnection with politics, that people think we're all the same, we all sound the same, we all look the same. We've now got a clear dividing line in the final two weeks of this campaign. And what we are saying is, look, this isn't just about uh, governing for the next five years. Um, the Tory manifesto but wouldn't even, wouldn't even fill five that years. that you can pay for your radical reform. Politics is a question of priorities. Look, the Tories have found £100 billion in tax giveaways to the very wealthy and the big corporations. What we're saying is it's time to invest in our communities. It's time to invest in our public services. It's time to heal a divided nation. It's time for real change. But why um, aren't people buying that message? Well, I believe we've got two weeks left. Look, at the end of the day, it's our job now. Now there's clarity as to what the Tories are offering and what we're offering to go out there every corner of the nation and to say, look, if you want real change, if you want to live in a better, fairer, more equal society, the Tories aren't offering that. They're offering more of the same. Today Labour you is offering real change. a further £58 billion to be spent on the so-called WASPy women. How are you going to pay for that? Well, we've been very clear. We put it in the uh, in, in the grey book that historic injustices uh, like the WASPy women, like the contaminated blood scandal and so on would be paid for separately. We've been clear. We will borrow that money to right that historic injustice where those women born in the 1950s were discriminated. The is, they were discriminated against throughout their working life. They didn't have equal pay. The Institute they didn't for have Fiscal they didn't have maternity rights. The Institute for Fiscal Studies says this is a move retirement. which drives a cart and horses through your promise not to borrow for day-to-day -day spending. Well, no, this is about writing an historic injustice. The 3.7 million women who were not given adequate notice under the 1995 and 2011 Tory Pensions Acts have that right to have compensation. It may well be that the courts instruct a future government to do that anyway. Very We're briefly, saying it's the right thing to do. Sorry to keep cutting across you. Very brief, briefly, your leader yesterday gave a long-awaited clarification of his policy on Brexit in the event of a new referendum, which was effectively to take no position at all. He'll remain neutral. Will that help or hinder you in this election? Well, I think it's right that in a sensible position that he will be an honest broker, because what we're saying is that we will get that fairer, better Brexit deal that protects jobs and workers' rights and standards. We will put that to the British people within six months of the Labour government taking office. And Jeremy Corbyn, as Prime Minister, will have to implement and will implement whatever the British people decide. I think being that honest broker Andrew, is absolutely the right thing to Andrew do. Andrew Gwynne, thank you very much for talking to us this evening. Thank you. Well, with me now is James Johnson, former special advisor to Theresa May when she was Prime Minister, and the former Labour advisor, Aisha Hazarika. Thanks very much, both of you, for coming in. James Johnson, you'll remember, probably painfully, that uh, Theresa May's manifesto launch in 2017 was seen by many people as the beginning of the end for her and her premiership. No such bold, risky moves today. Was that the right strategy? I think certainly from the Conservatives' perspective, they'll be happy with, today went, with how today went. This was the Play It Safe manifesto. The Conservative campaign is terrified of another 2017 unfolding. Um, and, and they seem to have sort of... They went for quite a light manifesto. It was quite a slimline document, quite a lot of pictures. Slim um, on detail, many people felt. Slim on policy. Slim on detail, but they did have some stuff in there. You know, they've got di the digital services tax in there, which, we, which when I was at number 10 was one of the most popular positive policies we tested. They've got measures on the NHS. They've got measures on the environment. 
I think they'll be happy with how this went. One note of caution, though, the Conservative manifesto in 2017 really imploded only a couple of days after when everybody realised what was in it. So, so you're predicting disaster by yet. Tuesday? I don't think... I think they'll probably be safe this time, but, but I'll just say, you know, I, they won't be breathing easy until the papers have landed and they're, and they're happy. I mean, Aisha Hazarika, we were talking to Andrew Gwynne there about the huge gulf in spending, mm. despite promising billions, Labour trailing badly in the polls now. What, for you, is going wrong? Well, I mean, I think Labour will be disappointed by the polls. Look, as Andrew Gwynne said, there's still 18 days to, to go and we were discussing beforehand that the Conservative Party hadn't quite unravelled at this point in the last election. And certainly when I've been on the doorstep, things like public services, a lot of the Labour policies are quite popular. Brexit's not the number one issue. However, the polls are not a good indication. I think part of it is there's just so much in the Labour manifesto. I think the irony is you've got two parties that have gone for very different approaches. Labour has so much, maybe everything is not... There's so much it's difficult to get. You know, only two or three or four policies cut through at a general election, whereas with the Conservative parties, there's, there's so little. But I think people are... One of your Vox Pops said that I just don't trust anyone to deliver anything. I think that's part of the problem. But what the Labour Party will want to do is really, really try and keep it away from Brexit, keep it on public services. When I've been door knocking across the country, health and education are the number one things that come up on the doorstep. But, the but there's a trust issue for both leaders, yes, though, definitely. isn't there? I mean, Boris Johnson was publicly laughed at in the debates um, this week. Do people trust he'll deliver on Brexit? I think there is some concern about that, certainly after the 31st of October deadline was missed. Um, I did some polling that came out on, on that 31st deadline, how people felt half of Leave, Leave voters felt betrayed about that decision. So there clearly is some caution and some sort of trust. But I would just... Just, Chris, what Aisha said there about, about Labour. I mean, yes, voters do doubt all politicians. But with the Labour Party, at this election in particular, they seem to particularly doubt whether Labour can actually deliver some of those big-ticket items. Again, I did some polling on the four-day working week, for example, and 78% of voters said they didn't think that would ever happen. I want happen. to come to you on, on that in one minute, yeah. but just on the get Brexit done, we heard um, Gary Gibbon talking to Nicky Morgan there. There's a deception in that simple phrase, isn't there? Because we, even if the deal gets through, it will, Brexit will not be done. Does that matter that there's a deception in that? So it's very interesting with these slogans, because if you think strong and stable in 2017 or long-term economic plan in 2015, those were slogans trying to persuade people of something. With Get Brexit Done, what the campaign, what the Conservative campaign has done, they've heard that in focus groups, they've heard people saying that to them, and they're repeating it back. But so I it makes it more effective. the trust thing is absolutely huge. You know, we have had a Prime Minister who... He's been sacked for lying from other jobs. That's on the record. That's a matter of fact. He said do or die. He said die in a ditch. There has been promise broken again and again and again. And trust is a big issue for all the politicians in this general election. And, yes, the Conservatives are doing very well, but I, I do think a lot of people are cottoning on to the fact that don't... We aren't stupid. This is just the beginning of Brexit. Brexit is going to probably take up but probably the rest of my working life, to be honest, in terms of untangling... If you both acknowledge all. there's a trust issue for both leaders, the polls, and we know they can be wrong and there are 18 days to go... It does seem as if that matters less with Boris Johnson at the moment than Jeremy Corbyn in terms of well, trust. Well, what I would say about the Labour... I think Jeremy Corbyn is an issue on the doorstep. I'm not moving away from that. He, it, it was an issue in 2017 as well. But the brand of the Labour Party is quite strong. And I've even been hearing on phone-ins over the weekend staunch Labour supporters who are Leave supporters saying, OK, I might not give my vote to the Labour Party, but I will give it to the Brexit Party. I will not vote for Boris Johnson, because that is a big line to cross for a lot of traditional Labour Party voters. On that issue of trust and delivering, um, the triple lock, you know, big proposal today, the Institute for Fiscal Studies, say it's also part of a damaging narrative which suggests we can have the services we want with more money for health and pensions and schools without paying for them. We can't. Mm. I think there's certainly an element of that. Certainly when I've been doing focus groups in the last, in the last couple of weeks, people have doubted the spending plans of the Conservatives and Labour because they think, you know, how they're just giving us promises, they just, they just want politicians to be up front with them. And I think that and is a real And also, thing I do think, with, the, with a lot of the Conservatives' promises, I do think the people, the public aren't entirely stupid. The nurse's bursary, who cut that? It was a Conservative government. The police cuts, who got rid of the police? A Conservative government. The Conservatives are making a huge deal about restoring things 
that they themselves destroyed and they want like a biscuit for it. And, you know, I do think that that is a question that I think a lot of people will be asking as well, well on trust. What I would say about the Labour and, and, and the brand of both leaders is that the brand of the party and the leader are interconnected. And the doubt about Jeremy Corbyn and his leadership, yes, there's doubt about Boris Johnson, but it is so many times more with Jeremy Corbyn. When I was leading the polling at number 10, we used to do analysis to see what was the main thing driving votes away from Labour or the Conservatives. And Jeremy Corbyn was off the chart remember, driving votes away from Labour. Everything as we found out from the last election. And when you're actually on the doorstep in areas, yes, Corbyn does come up. I'm not denying that. But the heritage and often the local candidate has a, a you know, in terms of a, a, a great affection. And, you know, a lot of people go, oh, you know, I don't love both the two leaders. I don't love Corbyn, but I couldn't bring myself to vote for the Conservatives. Mm. I'm going to stick with Labour. I'm going to stick with what I know. And interestingly, on Brexit, the second referendum has cut through as a Labour policy. I was really But surprised. what about Jeremy Corbyn's people neutral position? People don't care position. about that. Most people aren't... Seriously? The, most people aren't in the weeds on it. If you're a very, very die-hard rem Remain person, you're probably going to vote Lib Dem, right? I... But actually, if you're a Labour person who you care more about austerity, all you've really picked up is that Labour's been a bit rubbish on Brexit, but now they're offering a second referendum. But, got, but the, the thing about how voters see these things is that they see them all, all connected. So Jeremy Corbyn's position on Brexit might not matter for that voter in, in relation to Brexit, but they do think about it when they think, how is he going to run the country? How is he going to look after our finances? And they're I, seeing I really this person who's... We're on that. I mean, I Boris Johnson famously promised to fix the crisis in social care. There was very little on social care today. Will that matter? Well, I think on social care, you know, it's it's a bit of a problematic situation for the Conservatives because obviously they're so aware of how much he a backfire in 2017. He said his big speech in Downing Street, his big oh, well, debut agree, to yeah. the public, I'm going to fix social care and here we are. And it's like, oh, nothing. Yeah, yeah. Eerie not silence on that very it's key not, issue. It's not a We're going to have to have eerie silence from both of you now, <laughs> I'm afraid. That sounded rather rude. But thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you very much.